Don't waste your time and release your music to nothing. You deserve to build an audience. You deserve to have the fan following and to really just crush it. In 2024, we want to make sure that your music is heard. I'm an independent artist. I'm not just an entertainment attorney. And I've been doing all the things for a long time. And in fact, I just got done doing promotion for one of my new singles. It's called Monster as well as the Monster music video. Everything I'm going to share in this is practical application of what actually works. And I've broken it down into five different tactics. One of them you've probably never heard of. It's a pretty big game changer. It was for me and I know it's going to be for you. So make sure you stick around until the end for that one. There's going to be three platforms that I hyper focus on as far as kind of where I think you should be on social media, right? And where I think you should be posting. Here's a little, you know, overview. Some content works better just broadcasting it everywhere. Okay, so work better, not harder. When you get super advanced with your marketing and your planning and your bulk content creating, you can do more advanced things with having different content on different platforms on different days. I don't think that applies to most people and I don't even think it's necessary, including for me. I have three different brands and I post on all the platforms. Anyway, so I'm going to talk about all these strategies and I know it's going to help you a ton. So make sure you subscribe to this channel because you're going to love this video and I release free new videos for you every single week. Starting with the first way to promote your music, in 2024, here are some tactics that are very specific to TikTok. Now, let me just say, it's not like, oh, you need to get on TikTok and you should start posting. Like, this is not generic advice. This is very practical <laughs> advice. And so the first thing is obviously, please start an account. If you still haven't gotten on TikTok for whatever reason, understand that that hang up is your own. It's your own perception. It's your own kind of whatever. And let me, you know, I'll pretend for a second I'm the label. I'm telling you, please just do it because you are cutting off potential audience and the potential to even go viral, the potential to get new fans, the potential to make money. So number one, go get the TikTok account. Make sure it's the same username as your other, you know, social media handles for, for consistency. But the nice thing with TikTok is that they've made changes recently with how you can not only upload music, okay, you can actually upload it directly from your phone now and rip it from, you know, videos that you have, but fans can add your song to their Spotify from TikTok. Spotify and TikTok and specifically TikTok is just making this super easy. So it's silly if you're not there, please go. Now, the format that is used uh, is, you know, like this with my phone, I'm live streaming right now. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so it's the nine by 16 format for all videos, which is the same for all the other platforms that I'm gonna be talking about. My method to madness is that I absolutely dig making content on TikTok, not required, but let me just give you a couple of ideas to think about. And one of which is you can now download your videos before you post them. Because right, if you post them, you can download load them after the fact, but there's gonna be a watermark. That's not cute. And PS, if you upload that video with the TikTok watermark on other platforms, the video will get suppressed because the other platforms see the, 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 the watermark and they hate it. They're like, stop promoting other platforms here. So what you do is that you just download the video before you post it. Now for me, the reason why I really prefer making content on TikTok is because I do a lot of viral things as far as like viral sounds and I add my own music. So for me, making content in TikTok, it's just easier. That's my method to madness. So I really like going through and as I am consuming content, I save or I favorite videos that I think that I can recreate their own brand for what I'm doing. So in your time where you're like, you know, mindlessly scrolling, on TikTok, really pay attention to stuff where you're like, I could do that because if you favorite it, then later on when you're actually making content, you can go back, select the video, select the sound, and then you just remake the thing that already worked. Because if you were served it, let's say, on the For You page, it's probably, you know, been viral and did really well. So that's how you can quickly use stuff that people already made viral and to adapt it to you. And this is like a great hack to get viral content that will go in between the other stuff that you do, promoting your music, promoting your services. Make sure you're actually going in fa favoriting the sounds and then coming back to it later because you will have a folder in your TikTok that will have all your saved videos with all your great ideas. Lastly, when it comes to making content, for TikTok, and this does apply for everything else technically, but bulk content creation. I'm an attorney. I run a law firm. I have multiple businesses. Like I'm extremely busy and I post probably 25 to 30 times every day across all my different platforms. For me to be able to do that, it's because of all the techniques that I'm talking about 
in this video, one of which is bulk content creation. If you're someone that does your hair and you want to get dressed up and you want to look a certain part before you make content, that's cool, but it takes time. So if it's going to take you 45 minutes to get ready and to set up your lights and to do all the things, please make like five TikToks or five pieces of content or 10 pieces of content. I'm at the point now where I'll dedicate, you know, two or three hours, maybe even more on a Saturday and I will make weeks of content because I've just done it so many times now and I don't want to do it every day. I don't want to do it every weekend, but it also is just better to be kind of in that headspace. You know what I'm saying? Because you're just on a roll at that point. You're coming up with ideas and it can be fun. So just do it. Number two, this goes back to the whole, you're making these videos and it's that nine by 16 format, Instagram reels. You can obviously create original content in Instagram through reels. If you do it, awesome, love it. And you can do the same thing with sounds and adding captions and doing all the cool things. If you make your content in Instagram reels, just same thing, please download the video before you post it because then you can go and post it on TikTok. So, you know, however you make the content, cool. But it's the same thing as far as we want to make sure that you are posting as often as possible, because just like TikTok, you can have stuff that goes viral. And if you have one video that goes viral with your song attached to it, it can be a complete game changer as far as getting your music in front of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And it's kind of a crapshoot for everyone. So, you know, the game is doing volume. The game is just showing up. And don't worry if your content doesn't do well. If a certain post does not do well, you don't have to sweat about it because it didn't do well, meaning not a lot of people saw it, meaning not a lot of people liked it, which means not a lot of people actually saw it. So don't worry about it. Anyway, back to Instagram Reels, same thing. You know, Instagram is favoring right now reels as well as carousel pictures. That would be kind of my mini tip. You want to focus on the reels. Okay. We want to make, you know, video content if possible, but something that you can do, which is great is have a carousel of like five or 10 pictures. They don't even have to be great pictures, but what happens is that when someone is on Instagram, when they see your post go by, if they don't like it or something and they refresh later and they come back into Insta Instagram, Instagram will show them the second photo, same thing, third photo. So they will literally show your post to the same person a bunch of times. So it's a really smart way to kind of, you know, reach out to your audience, get some more interaction, but reels is where it's at. We're going to get you pushed out. We're going to get some new eyes on your stuff and we're going to get followers for you. And let me just give you a quick example. So back to we release monster. One of the things that I had done was to create one of these little like viral focused songs. So it had a Rammstein sound attached to it, which is, you know, a band that I dig. I feel like it kind of works with my dark pop, you know, inspiration, so to speak. But anyway, the whole video was about just doing something that I thought was like entertaining. I thought my audience would kind of like it and it didn't directly promote my song. All it did is at the very end of the video, it said monster music video out now. And I just had a hunch that based on kind of doing it that way, it wasn't super spammy. It was meant to be more of like entertainment that it would do well. And in fact, it ended up doing over 100,000 views organically through Instagram reels that, you know, drove obviously awareness. It drove new followers. So these are tactics that really work. Moving on. If you're getting value out of this, please like this video. It helps to tell the YouTube gods to push it out to more people to help them. Number three. Same thing, the nine by 16 video, which of course you could create on any platform. You could even just record it in your phone. You could record it in CapCut if you like to do some blemish, you know, skin healing and make yourself look 20 years younger. You know what I'm saying? Do whatever you gotta do. But anyway, so YouTube Shorts is, I believe, where you should push just as hard, if not harder, than the other two platforms that I just talked about for 2024. And it's because YouTube is making such a push right now to get people into the whole, like, we're like TikTok. And so they are pushing the crap out of your shorts. They're doing it way more than the YouTube long form horizontal videos. And even now, if you do searches on YouTube, they show you the shorts results, usually first and before the actual videos that come up. They're pushing it that hard. I know and I can see that the organic reach and the results that are happening for myself, but also clients that I represent, it's there. It is happening. So like take advantage of it is what I'm trying to say. You're going to get big numbers and you're going to get bigger numbers than even, you know, your music videos or how those exact videos that you post on the other platforms will do. So please do it. So we have TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts. I spoke about those three because you need to choose three platforms to really hyper-focus on. And if you do extra and you're like, I'm posting to LinkedIn, I'm posting to X, I'm posting to what's the new one? Threads, love it. You're amazing and you're a superstar. But if you're not doing, let's say, one platform consistently, 
This is your homework. Now I'm going to get to the magic. This is all good stuff, but I'm really, really excited with uh, this next one that I'm going to give you. But please right now, subscribe to this channel. I'm giving you free value all the time. I'm helping you and, and you know, I want to see you guys succeed. Moving on. This is my secret sauce. And this is the thing that I would say was one of the biggest game changers and really helped my last release for my song Monster. And this is live stream audience harvesting. The technique, and I don't know if you guys have seen this if you are in TikTok, but you know, recently you see all of these creators who are like in cosplay and they will repeat the same thing and they'll kind of act like they're in a game. And so they'll be like, mm -hmm. Oh, chew, I sneeze. Mm -hmm. Ah, chew, I sneeze. And they do the same kind of thing over and over and over. That's not quite what we're doing here, but sort of. So the technique is to go on the live stream, pick your you know best platform that you have, okay? And on the live stream, you're going to kind of repeat the same thing, which is you have to have one call to action. Now, for example, the first time that I did this, my call to action was to join my newsletter, which is a great way to harvest your audience. And so you're not reliant on the algorithm. You're not reliant on a social media platform. And when we were kind of doing it, we acknowledge people who come into the live stream because some people just stop by and they don't say anything. Some people will. But for example, let's say people who are commenting, it's John. John stops in. You go, John, hey, how you doing? And John's like, ah, oh, good to see you. John, so good to see you. Hey, John, are you on my newsletter? If not, go get signed up right now. Come back. Let me know you did it. And then give them a reward. You don't have to do this, but it helps. So I tried over the course of like a couple different days, I tried different things. So on one day I did a spin. I go, John, I'm gonna give you a spin because it was more like a three fourths, you know, shot. <laughs> and so I would step back. I would do a spin when someone did it because I had my other computer up, which showed when people were subscribing on the newsletter. So it became a game. John, go right now, go get on my newsletter. The link's in my bio, or I linked it in, it, you know, as a, as a comment to this live stream. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And then John would go subscribe. I would see it. And then I go, John, thank you so much. He came back, I did a spin. And we did that for like 30 to 60 minutes. And it's so incredibly powerful because if you call someone out directly, psychologically, they feel like they need to do it. Now, here's the thing. If they're stopping in on your live stream, they probably like you <laughs> and they're probably going to want to do the thing anyway and they want to support you. And sometimes people just need to be told what to do. We did a different night because you know what? We don't want to get redundant. We don't want to go night after night after night saying the same thing gets boring. We did the newsletter and so we did it as a pre-release for the monster music video. And we go, if you get on the newsletter, you'll be able to see the monster music video early. So then there was an extra carrot of you get this benefit by going and doing this action. So, you know, we harvested just hundreds and hundreds of people over the course of, you know, a couple of days and um, then, you know, send out the video. And then the next call to action might be, okay, so now we're going live on the actual YouTube channel. So before the, the actual launch, we got on the live stream was, hey, go subscribe on the YouTube channel and then to have a reward. So you might do a, a hat tip. You know, I did kisses mwah, 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 for you, Johnny. Thank you so much. And just to make it a game, it's amazing for harvesting the people who actually care about what you're doing because you tell them exactly what they need to do and you put them into a place where you can reach out to them later on an actual email list that you own, right? That you can email. And then great things happen from that because then they, you know, most people open the emails. Hey, my new merch item is available. You know, you get some purchases, you get subscribers. I mean, it's a game changer. So live stream, audience harvesting. Mm. It's good stuff. Moving on, and this is the last tactic that I'll go through, but again, as far as like really giving you some things that are gonna change your ability to reach new fans, to get your music out there, this is the stuff. So let's talk about the posting schedule and how it should work. So here's kind of my method to madness. You know, if you don't really have an audience, obviously doing like this big pre-promotion and go pre-save my link and all this stuff, it might not be as effective. But if you do have a reasonably sized audience, you have like 50 people or 100 people of like dedicated fans, then doing all this pre-promotion is really gonna help getting the pre-saves, getting them, you know, signed up on the email list. It's all really good stuff. But at a minimum, your heart and your blood and your sweat and your tears absolutely have to go into play when you release the song and then for a very long time after the song comes out, which means for a single, like six months. And if it's a really good song that people seem to be responding to, you really should be promoting it for years because you never know when something's gonna get picked up on the algorithm. It might get a placement in a TV or film, you know, TV or film show, <laughs> a show or TV, any of the things, you know what I'm talking about. So this is what it should look like. A, you need to have a schedule. What happens so often for a lot of my clients is that 
They work so hard on the music and you guys know it is not cheap. It is not easy to make a song that you're excited about, that you believe in when you're working with people, man, that's just headaches, motivation issues. So you finally get your music done and then it all falls apart at the promotion because you didn't have a plan. And then the song came out and you thought you'd be motivated just to do it. Like, ah, it's out today, I'm gonna do some whatever. That's never how it goes. And so getting you in the mindset of thinking like a record label, you have to actually make the content ahead of schedule and you need to actually do bulk content creation. So this goes back to actually setting aside time and having ideas. And it's, you know, you don't have to be like as crazy, you know, marketer, but that's why I was like going on TikTok and saving ideas. You're like, oh, that was easy. One of the things that I even, you know, tell to people, I go, it's funny because one of the best things that I do is walk. It was my first video that went viral. I was walking downstairs. It was my first million. Most of my viral videos have a common denominator of something just very simple. It's walking with a sassy text on it. That works for me. And so you do have to figure out a little bit of what works for you, but like save ideas of what's working for other people and try it. Now, make sure you recreate your best performing content. You know, you were singing in the car a cappella, or you're pulling a prank and then your music's just playing in the background, whatever it is, recreate it every time you have a new song release and try different things. All right, so um, I do have like a marketing schedule and some ideas of like how to promote your music and all the things, and it's for free. It's like part of a, a jumpstart guide. I'll link it down in the description so you guys can get that. It has like a free split sheet as well and just an overview of kind of how to help you, but really getting a schedule and executing on it is almost more important than the quality of the music. Don't waste your time and release your music to nothing because you deserve to build an audience. You deserve to have the fan following and to really just crush it in 2024. I'm going to help you get there. Make sure you subscribe. I love your faces and I will see you on the next one.